It's Ask the Club time every Tuesday on Ball Street. We answer your questions. You need to get your questions in on a Monday, though, on the Ball Street Twitter, at Ball Street. Uh, I'm joined by Freddie from the Ugly Inside. Flab's here and Sam from United People's TV. And my name's James. Let's get into it. First one from Paul Machin, who's not here this week. Does Flav shop in Mothercare or has he kept his jumpers since childhood? Uh, this has come from the bastion of fashion. Uh, that is answer Paul Machin. Answer the question. Silly question. Uh, sticking with Flav, uh, Caterham 7. Chance of some old fashioned punch ups when Mill will go to Spurs. Is there a rivalry there? Uh, Do yeah. you expect violence? Yes, 100%. And that's part of the reason why there's, the, the, there's literally more excitement about this game with Millwall than there is any other this season. People are scrabbling around. Is it at Spurs? Or? Yeah, it's at Spurs, oh. trying to get tickets. And, it, and it's the throwback to the way football was once. And it's, it's easy to romanticise about football then. And it was violent and dangerous and they weren't welcoming to the marginalised people in society. Um, at the time, but and, and football's changed for the better. But there is something about that old school football match that is still appealing to lots of people. Um, so I think there will be trouble. Are you going to get scrappy? I'm not. Uh, you can see from my face that I'm not a fighter. Although he drops a grenade and walks away. Not actually. Not I might. I might. Uh, I might throw a dig. If, um, <laughs> if yeah. Well, yeah, mum. Yeah. It might. I might. Uh, I, no, no. What's your best? Uh, what's your best dig? Just generally, what do you go mean, with? I just mean like a punch. No, like a verbal dig. Left hook. <laughs> um, I haven't got anything like that, any, any verbal digs. We did uh, say what what I'm saying, but th th that's, that's the excitement. There will be a lot of that, 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 that kind of tetchy atmosphere. Will Mill will well up for it. They've got nearly 4,000 fans coming down. Um, all of the certain element of us support, whether they can get into the ground or not, are going to be there. So... I sound like I'm glorifying all of this stuff. It isn't. I know I don't want anyone to get hurt at a football match. They should never do that. But, but, um, <laughs> but. there is, you know, like the, when there is a fight in the playground, you always run, run and have a look. Circle them out. Yeah. You did, so we did a podcast, a uh, long bullshit podcast, which you can see on iTunes mm. uh, and on the YouTube channel. Do it after this video, obviously. Uh, okay. and you, and you brought this up. We didn't really expect it to come up, but does the hardness of your team, is that important to you as a fan? If you're being honest. If you're being honest. Fan of your fan base. Well, yeah, Roy Keane is my favourite player. No, 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 Because no, no, he's a hard no, bastard. No, 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 no. Listening. Right. Listening. Listen to the question. Right. <laughs> the fans. <laughs> is it important that you've got Hold hard up. fans? Right, okay, okay, okay. Not in, not in the modern era, no. Not bothered. Yeah. Well, we all, we all said yes, didn't we? It's not going to get you top four, we, is it? We're not, we're not, like, we're not... It's helpful. No, it's not helpful. It's just helpful for your own street cred, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like people got your QPR. Oh, you're uh, hard as uh, nails. Clearly, QPR got a bit of tidy firm, and they. Yeah. I think a, a lot Bush of people babies, ride on the back of the fact that, 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 that all of the, I wouldn't say work that the hooligans put in, but the, <laughs> the kind of great work, yeah, great job. Their willingness to be hurt in the name of the football club. They're um, soldiers. But for Thank some you. reason, whatever it is, I know it's childish and and Neanderthal to a certain way. It is quite important to me that Tottenham are, are concede, considered a quite a tough cl club. Okay. It's, it's one of the things we've had over Arsenal for so long because... Um, Haven't had anything else. Not so tough. I wonder what people say in the comments after that comment. Yeah. Lots. I'm sure uh, there are Dan, the support though. At Danny Everingham, do we need video refs? Might ask you this one, Freddie. Do we need video refs yes. after that League Cup final? Certainly. I mean, especially, I mean, it, even if it's just offsides or, you know, even just, it's going to cost you £50 to get a monitor in, in, the, in the dugouts in the, in the technical area. Give the fourth official some more authority. What is he doing? Is he just, keep, is he just keeping, the, keeping the score, keeping the time? Give him more authority. Give him more communication to the, to the main referee. Because Sunday was a great example, but it's not just Sunday. There's... I'm sure every one of our clubs, whoever you support, somewhere along the, along the lines, we've all been robbed of a decision here. A handball, penalty, you know, free kick, offside, whether the ball's gone out of the byline. But it's, it took them years to get the goal line technology into place. And I read reports that as early as next season, they could be trialling mm -hmm. video replays. And I hope that it does come in in some degree. I'd love to know what the pay scale is for that fourth official. What is he actually doing mm -hmm. for that shift? Fuck off. You know, he's basically saying, Keep in your box. Yeah. He's a bouncer. He's a bouncer, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And he also likes to, oh, He's also he's a bouncer slash like one of those cheerleaders at the boxing. Mm. <laughs> she does a bit of that, doesn't he? You're saying that he should change his attire. <laughs> no. 
I, I guess uh, well, we'll feel do, it out, do, do we do we want a fairer game or do we want a more interesting game? That's that's the that's See, the Flav wants that's violence. The yeah. Flav wants violence and injustice. What do you yeah. want? That's it. That feels like a loaded question. I think like I, I just think it's you. By the way. I, of course, all day. Yeah. The the uh, you know the, the fact of just getting every decision right. And I know. Look, as a Southampton fan, you're going to be fuming from yesterday. I would be too. Um, but. The game is more interesting for us outside of Southampton to be able to talk about a goal that you should have had that you didn't get. Um, and and f- what is, what's the point in football if it isn't creating discussion points? If everything becomes so sanitised into into saying like you know everything has to be decided by a computer or a video ref or second opinions, you're like you know sometimes it, you get these decisions, sometimes you don't. I think I think there's a balance. I think you're right to a, to a point. You still need there to be you know the the ref needs to be not a robot that you can't you can't call for everything and diving is up to interpretation things like that but i, I do I, f- I think like an offside i'd like them to be fair I'm yeah honest. yeah i see where you're coming from it's just how, how how do you do it without disrupting the game i mean it, it could get diluted to the fact that it's like rugby where the fans are they're not segregated because every decision is already made by a replay the referee always communicating with each other always got the uh, the, the box to, to review it and as, as it is with cricket as well they've got replays to help them does it become diluted when football becomes like cricket and rugby do fans have more passion when there's more when all the, all the decisions are correct I'm not sure yeah there's one thing I do want though is microphones on refs because I think that would be funny hilarious and really exciting to watch actually yeah I'm up for more stuff that makes the game exciting you want talking points you've got a whole yeah. chat show okay uh, number one summer target Freddie Sorry, you're drinking. Mm. Flat. Peely dips. Uh, fuck, uh, I, would, I haven't prepared for that one. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Top of your head. Uh, the, the target should be getting rid of Vincent Janssen. That should be the <laughs> That's first. That's the target. That's the first. Reached it. No target. one wants him. Yeah. Well, can't get rid of Take him. Take him. Mutual, <laughs> mutual, him mutual, mutual consent. Yeah. Um, uh, f- uh, so can you come back to me? Yeah, it's fine. Who would you, who do you want? Griezmann. Sure. Griezmann. Easy. Ah. Uh, back to Flav. Dybala. Yeah, you like the value, don't you? 160 million pounds. Let's make a statement. Tottenham, whack that money down. Let's go and get the best number 10 in, would, in Europe. Would you swap him for Kane? Woo! We went there. How would you accommodate them both? That's not the question, is it? Really? Yeah. I could work that one out. <laughs> um, oh, no, because I love Harry Kane so much. But that would that's what we need. We need that number 10 or, or left-sided winger, left-winger. That's going to set us apart. Our, 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 so front, is Ericsson, you go, our front three, you know, of, of Ericsson, Ali, and Son need need competition that isn't Musa Sissoko. <laughs> Why are you scared to say that? It's okay to give your opinion. I've said that many times. Right. It's just that I'm just very wrong it. about certain things. Like your volume went down a little bit. Freddie, though. Adam says, how do you cope as a Saints fan constantly you losing your best players? Well, we do what we do every year. We, we march on. We're we trying to take over the world. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> take over the world. <laughs> What's your pinky in the brain? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, what we do, we adapt every year. And we have faith in our system, faith in our recruitment team. And, you know, the, the team, despite us losing these players all the time, we've always got a, a plan of action. Our club, for, for example, is a prime example about how much depth and how much of a plan we've got. If we compare our club to Leicester, for example, who don't have a plan B, let's face it, plan A failed, what's next? Don't know. So Lampton's always got a B, C, D, plan Z, we've always got something that's gonna happen and help G. us. <laughs> F. Give me a J. <laughs> I know all the letters. And help us progress. <laughs> okay. Uh, last, last two. Um, Sam, what was your most emotional football moment ever? Let's get deep. Oh, oh. you ever cried at football, Sam? <laughs> Liar! You're dead inside! <laughs> like, of course you have! We've all cried, we've all been there. That moment you're completely heartbroken, the tough veneer of being a man shatters and a single tear just rolls down your cheek. Yeah. When you're that hungover, mm. you still feel like you should go because it's your season ticket. I've cried when I've been that hungover. <laughs> 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 Nothing to do with the football. What was the game? It was last year. What? I was just thinking about it. I was, it was so, I was, it was about February, couldn't have been more mid table of the game. <laughs> and uh, I, it was so hungover, I was wearing sunglasses and a beanie. You know, you need them both yeah, just yeah. for the protection. And I was just, and I got there and I'd forgotten that my dad wasn't going to be there. 
Oh, <laughs> sorry, this is crap. Just got yeah, really emotional. Uh, <laughs> to answer that question probably, John Harrison, sorry, at Paul Lennon, 1964. Uh, most emotional one for me was, um, we had a player called Ray Jones, who died in a car crash when he was like 19, and uh, the game after that, which is actually against Southampton, and we lost, uh, we lost 3-0 in the game, not because of that. Mm-hmm. Obviously just like, to lose one of your own was, uh, was, was pretty bad, so that's pretty emotional for me. Fla? I think, um, um, I mean, there, there's ones where results have gone. To, I've had two times I've cried, right? One, I'm not going to say. The, the second time was the, uh, it was bizarrely a League Cup quarter final against Nottingham Forest. And I was about I 10. And Mark Crosley saved, uh, saved the penalty at White Lane and he ran down the edge. And I was just like, it was because he was go. It was like celebrating so hard. I was ten. And I didn't understand injustice as well as I do now, <laughs> and I, I've become hardened to it. I, uh, I I just cried, cried my eyes out. But the saddest, the saddest one was uh, the, the weird that I genuinely felt sad and morbid was the Muamba uh, when he had uh, the heart attack and um, on the pitch and I, I it was a feeling. I it was weird. It was like a God, shared yeah, grief or, or fear. And it was just shared by everybody in the state and it was deadly silent. Yeah. And everyone was just kind of praying because we essentially watched a man keel over and die in front of us on a football pitch. And it was just, it's an, I can't describe how strange that atmosphere was. Uh, Freddie? Well, I never, not sort of cried at a football match, but the saddest moment is when we go down to League One and go into administration. We sort of, at that point, it was Rupert Lowe in charge. There was a revolt with our fans because we hated him, what he did to our football club. Um, and we were saved by Marcus Lieber, who, bless him now, um, has helped us revive the football club from that from that day on. Yeah, it is, uh, when you're in that kind of situation, just you just feel a bit lost as a club. You're just going, is it going to ever get better? Mm. Uh, sorry, quick thing on that. I, I'm mm. reading an article in a magazine about a, a Southampton fan. He said that the best time they ever had was in League One mm. right, in terms of atmosphere and the togetherness and the kind of a stoical back toward backs against the walls type attitude. It was amazing. He said it was kind of lost since you went up the leagues and into the Premier League. That's inevitable. I think those kind of things. Mm. Yeah. It just becomes more commercialised when you're in the prem. Yeah. I think uh, I've got I've got mine. Oh yeah, he's oh, yeah. <laughs> been thinking away. Yeah, is he? I haven't really <laughs> listened to anything. <laughs> right. Said. Okay, go. Cool. It was definitely Fergie's last game for me. That was just. Did you, you see know? his nose at the League Cup final? Yeah, it's like no, purple. I, didn't see anything. I don't know what colour tier. it was, mate. It was it was mauve. Purple mauve. <laughs> What is that? How does his nose shade of purple. Mauve. Anyway, thanks for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. Did you Anyway, he's got a very purple nose, isn't he? And finally, last one, just quickly, one word answers for this one. Newman, LFC fan, at the Gerrard fan. Which top six club needs the biggest transfer overhaul in the summer? Freddie. Liverpool. Ooh. Lad. Manchester City. It's two words. <laughs> Wait, don't you? Yeah, that's good. It's disrespectful to say City, because <laughs> there's lots of City. Uh, Man City as well. City. <laughs> City. Manchester City. City. All right. There you go. So that's this week's uh, Ask the Club. As I said at the start of the video, don't forget to get involved on Twitter at Ball Street. Uh, every Monday, we ask you uh, for your questions, which we do on the show, and they go out every single Tuesday. Um, if you've got anything you want to say about uh, this video, maybe who do you think uh, needs the biggest overhaul uh, in the summer, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Most importantly, subscribe to what, Sam? Ball Street!